Shalom to the saints. I come before you, giving praise to God Almighty in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. God by the Holy Spirit. I come giving the warning that I feel urged to give. I believe I am a watchman and God appointed me a watchman for the house of Israel, as well as for anybody who can receive the message because we all become one in the body of Christ through Christ, through grace by faith. Ezekiel 33 and six. So unfortunately, a lot of watchmen have been sounded trumpets. Unfortunately, a lot of warnings have been given. And I say, unfortunately, <clears throat> it's because I don't believe we received all the warnings that the Lord has been giving us. So I feel grieved in my spirit knowing what was already here, you know, and what's, and what's coming. But not to beat around the bush, simply put, to those who are already aware from Revelation, either you know or you need to study or find out and ask God for help. And that's what I'm doing continu continuously to seek God's help and enlightenment, not assuming at any point unless he gives me the absolute truth, you know, that I know everything. And what I get, I receive, I take it to my heart, and these days I lock it in. I'm doing my best to lock it into my to my spirit, to my soul. So I can stand on that truth, stand on the Jesus Christ, and stand on every foundational principle and everything that he's given me. But um the warning comes as far as the fourth kingdom, as far as this the the sword coming. He says that the watchman doesn't blow that blows and blow the trumpet and warn the people and then the people's blood is on my hand so I've been trying to warn I've been trying to warn myself the Holy Spirit been talking to me through me through messages through others I'm trying to warn myself to <clears throat> get your house ready I've been led for many years of the Lord to spiritually focused and unfortunately a lot of times I lost focus I lost sight like Peter I took my eyes off Jesus and started sinking and I have everything the disobedience and distraction I had you backslide with the help of the enemy he'll push you backwards further than you ever want to go but with that being said I don't really have time to have a pity party and it woe is me, it's not the situation. I'm saved by the grace of God, literally redeemed, resurrected by the grace of, and blood of Jesus Christ. Cause I was just in another stupor asleep. But now that I'm awake, I must speak and I will do everything I can to speak the truth while I'm awake and I will fight to stay awake. So as we should know, the coming of Christ is obviously coming. Jesus is coming. That's without a doubt. God never tells a lie. Everything he speaks is absolute truth that comes out of his mouth and his word never returns back to him void. So everything he says will be done. It's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But from Revelation is the four horsemen. Ironically, I say ironic, it's not really ironic more or less, but nonetheless, I always pondered who, who, who's what and how's what, you know, and all this. But, you know, shout out to Jason A for posting the video. And what Jason A posted sparked me in the spirit like, Lord, is this, is this it? You know, and I don't hear necessarily audible voice of the Lord. He speaks into my heart. He speaks into my mind. And I perceive it. And he gives me a perception. Don't get me wrong, too. The enemy each other do the same thing. He's a copycat. The adversary does the same thing with speaking to your mind and try to mimic the encounter of God or the voice of God. But what I've learned is 
obviously God speaks absolute truth. The devil speaks absolute lies. So when I put the message of the word up against God's word, I should be able to find God. It should, it should co-sign the Holy Spirit. They all align. The secrets are unlocked through the Holy Spirit and the understanding that comes from God. When you wax, then you see how the Bible is all interwoven by the Spirit together. You see that there's no contradictions. And what you thought was contradictions was just trying to understand things with a carnal mind, which which is death and, and not being led by the Spirit or trying to lean on your own understanding, which is the same carnal thing, your own understanding. You can't possibly understand God. Only God can reveal God. Only God can reveal Jesus. We only come to Jesus because God revealed them to us that we know he's the son of God, that he's the one to call upon and be saved. It's, it's by the Holy Spirit of truth. So I speak to those who know. Sometimes I find myself literally in conflict at every aspect because there's a part that wants to speak all spiritual. And there's a part that says, well, what if it's somebody who never heard who Jesus is? is and what he's done so i end up trying to do both which is confusion so i kind of let me just go with the spirit I, i've been sent for the lost tribes of israel i've been sent for the lost sheep i, I was a lost sheep myself truly i got lost i'm not gonna get into all that but god knows i am a lost sheep the message is for the lost sheep we must prepare our Get our house ready, got our house in order, and that is first and foremost our temple, our temple of the temple of God, where the Holy Spirit lives in, or is coming to live in. Some of us may have quenched it, some of us haven't received, some need to tarry, some need to ask and truly believe and ask God for the Holy Spirit, because without a doubt we need the Holy Spirit. I mean, we, we always, <laughs> always needed him. But since it's been dispensed through the resurrection of Christ, we need him to be guided in these days because we are in perilous times. There's a spiritual famine. Soon a physical famine. And some are already experiencing both of these things in different aspects, different seasons for different people. But we're coming to the pinnacle of revelation. Prophecy being fulfilled. And it must happen. So to be ignorant will not do us any good to be unaware of what's here and coming or to just assume that we're just going to pray away prophecy, which is like how so. If we're led by the spirit of God and we believe God and we trust in God and we know that God is faithful and he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Why would we pray away prophecy? Why would we reject prophecy when God says this is what's going to come? So how would that be obedience if we wrestle with God, not like Jacob for a blessing, but we wrestle with God or you do wrestle for a blessing, but you want to wrestle. We want to wrestle for the for the blessings that we want. This is what I want. We want it like this rather than this is what it is. So I can't speak for the next person. I'm led to be like, who am I to pray, pray against prophecy? I put it on the next generation when it's even more of a wicked world and even more devices of Satan being used and less truth and less labor is telling the truth, willing to stand in the gap, willing to give their life or willing to speak actual judgment, even if that a judgment affects them, even if they, they be subjugated to that very judgment. But nonetheless, this is the word of the Lord. This is what it is. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord rather than man. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord rather than Satan because I know Satan's a tyrant. There is no mercy inside of Satan. There is no mercy whatsoever. There's no grace. There's no mercy. He does not bestow those qualities. So if we're looking for peace, we're looking for grace, we're looking for mercy, only be found in God Almighty through the name of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of the Lamb. Because I can assure you, I promise by my, by my own testament, my own experience, there's no mercy in Satan. So looking for that in him, it's insanity in a whole nother level. But nonetheless, four horsemen, the Antichrist spirit was already in the world during Paul's time frame. How many years ago was that? Some are low, under 2,000, 2,000 years. 
Four Horsemen, that first rider, the White Horseman, on the White Horse that, that if you don't know, it can easily be confused like, oh, that's Jesus. No, that first horseman is not Jesus. We know and we should know that before the coming of Christ comes that the great falling away takes place. Paul tells us that Thessalonians and that certain events must take place, which is really the great tribulation before the return of Jesus Christ. So immediately after tri the tribulation, look at Matthew, look at the accounts of the Gospels, immediately after the tribulation, then the, then the, then the signs appear for the Son of Man's return. But we're heading to the, the beginning of sorrows. That's just where we are. But I was always wondering, we kind of pondered, going with different brothers and Christ and sisters and God help me in the name of Jesus. So that first rider that 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 that's on a white horse that that has a bow. God help me in heaven if I'm wrong. I'll be the first one to say I'm wrong. Correct. Receive the correction. So, I watched the Jason A video and it kind of sparks two and two together. And like I've been kind of wondering upon it anyways. But the video is just about this black, the black hole. So you can look up Jason A, one of his most recent videos as far as the black hole goes. And as we understand the black hole, is supposed to be something so powerful, a vacuum that sucks everything into it. You know, speed of light moves faster than the speed of sound. Carnally, theoretically, light can't escape a black hole. In theory, we know that God's above and beyond, and He's not defined to any kind of laws of man, gravity, laws of anything like time. He's outside of all that. He he he's a creator of all that. So they say light can't escape the black a lot black hole. But yet sounds coming out of this black hole, and sound moves faster. Speed light moves, excuse me, light moves faster than sound, but yet Vibrations are coming out the black hole. And you can hear these growls, which sound like a growl, which personally to me sounds like a beast. We already been warned in Revelation 13, there's a beast coming out the sea, there's a beast coming out the land. The dragons behind the workings of those, giving them power. That's the formation of the, one, the new world order, the one world system, Babylon. It's been coming together. It is, it's, it's here coming. It's more intact than we think it is, but nonetheless. So I say ponder on that, that light can't escape the black hole, but sound is escaping and, and what is supposed to be a vacuum, something's coming out. So this in theory, what would be strong enough if that's the case to defy the laws of physics and all this other stuff. Obviously, the spiritual realm is in a different dimension. It's not held or bound by how we are in this physical flesh in this dimension and in the third dimension. The, 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 the spiritual is the fourth dimension and possibly beyond. The length, height, width, and depth. Fourth dimension. Maybe there's more God in heaven knows, but let me not go where I don't belong. So that... Riders conquering, comes out to conquer, it's conquer, given the crown and, and, and sent out conquering. I feel this sign is 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 being said in so many different ways. If we haven't received it in our spirit, then then even the stars is talking. So I'm not talking about astrology, but I find it funny. Not funny, it's not funny at all, but I find it ironic more or less that the scientist, I forgot his name, but the one from New York, the uh, Asian brother, whatever, um, is saying that if you want to see a black hole, you want to see this black hole, look up into the constellation of Sagittarius. So once again, not astrology. I hadn't been into all of that and thought that before I came to Christ and thought that was so wild until I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm like, like, yeah, this is whatever. This is garbage to base your life off of that when the word of God tells us who we are, what we are, and who created us. And, you know, sometimes people like, like will respect the receiver truth quicker than, a, respect the lie, excuse me, respect the lie quicker than the truth. 
But nonetheless, so it just had me pondering. And I'm like, well, Sagittarius, with Sagittarius, go figure. It's the rider on a white horse or the hybrid or minotaur of a, of a man and a horse together holding a bow. So to me, I'm like, I was so, so convinced and convicted. I'm like, this is one of the greatest signs for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear and a mind to perceive what's going on and the revealing of the Antichrist, like hair coming already happened. You know what I'm saying? Like it just happens to be the constellation that has the rider on the white horse with a bow, a black hole in which things are supposed to be getting sucked into. So we know from the scriptures that whoever's name is not written in the book of life of the lamb will worship the beast, will inadvertently worship the beast and get the mark of the beast. Now there is a remnant in between who have time to decide, repent, to call on Jesus and be saved. But all those whose names are not written in the book of life are going to the beast. Eventually won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And it sounds so cliche because it's been warned for so many times because God has been so gracious to warn us and warn us and really give grace and mercy so that man might be saved because that's the will of God that all men be saved. But we unfortunately know that every man will not receive the truth and be saved. Even in the simplicity, but complexity of the son of perdition is certain ones of people that are set for evil. Out of heaven knows I'm just fighting with all I got not to be one of those and, and fighting that deception. And that's a whole nother thing, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So what's coming out the black hole? What's coming out the abyss? Things are so upside down. I feel like the Lord was, you know, teaching me a lesson. Things are so far upside down. What we call up is down and what's down is up. I'm not going to go too far in that because it can get confusing. And God is not the author of confusion. And everything he reveals to man sometimes, maybe sometimes it's not for you to speak on. Maybe it's a ponder on to ask him, wait till you get insight or just a ponder. He doesn't reveal every single thing. But nonetheless, I say, go figure that the white horseman is one of the, is the first horseman that comes out. Yet Sagittarius is this constellation of which is, you can see this black hole that's supposed to be sucking things in physically, but all of a sudden something's happening. So it's like spiritual things are happening. Just focus on the spiritual first before the physical, because everything's coming from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Everything's manifested in the spirit realm, then it manifests itself into the physical realm. God said everything that we see was made that things that we can't see. <clears throat> With that being said, so things are being reversed. All the evil and wickedness being done, the seances and everything else, the rituals, everything else was, was to do this very thing. This is what they want. The very thing to believe is the body of Christ that basically should be warned against. This is what this is what the, the children of disobedience are bringing forth for CERN with everything the hydro collider like they're using, musical portals, rituals, all this stuff to open up portals. So go figure it's in the sky. Sound is coming out that sounds like a beast growling. The darkness, the kingdom of darkness is merging with, with 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 humanity like it's happened before this is the fourth kingdom the mixing of the iron and the miry clay it's partly strong partly weak being spiritual forces combined with 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 humans i believe it's partially weak because that's not the divine order of how things were set by the most high to be I'm sweating a little bit because i'm in the car with the windows up to cut down sound Holy Ghost fire. The divine ordinances of God is for God to be with man, for God to sit on the throne in the hearts of man and to be one with man. That is the ultimate plan, the end game. If 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 you have the eyes of perception to see that since Adam, God already had provisions in the second Adam, Jesus Christ, to save and redeem us, to restore us, to rightfully have God inside of us as Holy Spirit and ultimately the complete merging with the recognition, the recognition of it. Jesus is in the Father, that we are in Jesus, so we are all one. And that we will be completely one. We see partial now, but it'll be complete when Jesus comes, what we are, who we are. But that will be the divine ordinance that God, the living God, the true living God, Yahweh, Yah Almighty, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with us. That's the way it's supposed to be. Not Satan. Our fallen angels, whatever have you be, the kingdom of darkness and men. So that's that iron and miry clay, because it's not, it's it's not it's not the divine ordinance, so it doesn't hold one to the other. 
be aware, saints. Whoever will come across this message, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that people don't look at me and allow the enemy to dilute or water down the truth of God because of who God chooses to use and what the enemy has planted seeds of corruption, disruption has gone before me to have people believe I'm this, I'm that, and I'm, you know, this is what he did here. Yeah. I'm telling you by the grace of God, I'm saved. Saved by faith through grace. At the same time, I have no time to worry about what people think. The sword is at the roots. The sword is coming. The prophecy of Daniel from, from Isaiah, like Jeremiah, the prophecy up into the revelation of Jesus Christ. The kingdom is, is here. It's here. It's time to lock in with Jesus like never before, if you are locked in, it's time to stay locked in. It's time to have that blood on your doorpost. God is going to put a mark on all of his servants. Revelations in chapter 7, all his servants are going to receive a seal. Just like all those who are not written in the book of life are going to receive the mark of the beast on their forehead or on their right hand. It is what it is. Get our house in order. It's time to get our house in order, beloved. It's time to fight with all we have is stand for the truth of Jesus Christ and love our lives not unto death. It's those who try to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. That's the truth of Jesus. It's just the word of God. The Antichrist is coming. You like said, some, you know, God forgive me, God help me. You know, I spoke, I said years ago, Obama, because you know, I believe he has the spirit of the Antichrist. I really don't care what anybody got to say about that. I feel like what, what the research was, was showing me and what I even got even in a dream. So if he's not the Antichrist and uh, Antichrist, which there's plenty because the spirit of the Antichrist has been in the world and so many people had the spirit of the Antichrist. I struggle with that spirit. And it's not what you think it is, but it's what you think it is, but it's not what you think it is because it, it, it'll, it's a spirit that fights to replace Christ. It's a deceptive spirit that'll have you reject the truth and walk in deception as far as whether you think you're Christ and twist up the truth. And, well, I'm Christ. Well, no, I'm, I'm the body of Christ. Even if I'm just his pinky toe, I'm in the body of Christ. I'm the body of Christ. But it twists truth and tries to seduce you into believing anything besides the absolute truth. It'll be true lies, but you know the father lies behind it because that's what he does. He tells true lies. He don't have no truth in him. Every truth he speaks is a lie. <clears throat> we got to get our house in order. Repent. Fast pray. Ask God for whatever we're lacking in. Because we don't want to be ill-prepared for when the day of evil comes. Our day of evil comes. Because you don't know when that is. And you, or you don't know if we're the generation that's going to literally have to deal with the Antichrist in the flesh. Satan in the flesh. And we're going to have to deal with them killing us off. Because we refuse to receive the mark of the beast. We refuse to bow down. And of course we love the stories of you know of the Hebrew boys of Daniel. But that's us looking and seeing what God did and seeing the ending. When you're going through the storm yourself, it'll be has to be by complete faith because you don't see the end. So, of course, we want to just get raptured out and just disappear. Like we ain't got to deal with that. What if we have to deal with it? What if you are the person to deal with it? You don't even know. I might go on, but I'll be gone. I don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. So it's best to be prepared because we might be the ones that have to deal with it. I don't want to put it on the, the next generation, to be honest. Not saying God can't rise up in them. He, I know he's rising up a mighty army. God always got a remedy. God always is working. I don't think for one second that God is not rising up a mighty army, a nameless, faceless army. I believe absolutely. But I'm like, why well, put it on them? We might have to be the ones to deal with this and be ready to lay down our life for Jesus Christ. So just be warned that stuff is coming through the portals. It's already here and coming. You know, unfortunately, all these worldly artists and different stuff, this is what they've been talking about. 
That's why I go with conflict. You hear my song? Yeah, I talk about Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why, 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 why? Because he led people straight into blasphemy. He blasphemed the Holy Spirit and led how many countless souls into blasphemy? So, yeah, I got a problem with that. He's the very man that's like, yeah, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. It's better than Antichrist. He blasphemed the Holy Spirit, a sin unpardonable. Two things you can't be saved from. Blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and receiving the mark of the beast. Those are the two things that disqualify, disqualify you from salvation in this world and the, in the next world to come. <sighs> Help us, Jesus. So I've been battled spiritually. You don't got to know who I am or understand it. I, I, I thought people should have understood it or got it. But nonetheless, I feel like I'm a watchman. I, I gave the warning. People refused to, to receive it. I pray somebody receives it. If not, hey, I spoke it. I don't want nobody's blood on my hands. I don't want nobody to perish. I don't want no believer to perish. I don't want nobody who doesn't receive Jesus. I want them to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and be saved and have their soul saved, have safety in their heart and be a safety of their soul that God will protect us and lead and guide us through this life and bring us bring us to the next, the bosom of Abraham. You know what I'm saying? Like, I truly, truly my desire. So I ain't popular. I'm not doing this for none of that. You know what I'm saying nobody cares most times what I'm saying it's been that way since the 10 years I've been in Christ I've been speaking and people yeah, it, and I, I just fell upon deaf ears and had me ready to kill myself thinking that I was a deceiver and you know let the devil into my life let the devil into my mind refuting and rejecting what God has given me but I'm like well they don't see me I don't understand Lord and I lost myself lost myself so many times waiting for man to respond when God been giving me provisions and grace and mercy. So I'm like, in this season, like, Lord, I'm going to speak. I don't care if nobody listens. If it's just the phone, then I gave the message. If it's just a microphone, then I spoke. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that somebody receives the absolute truth, the warning, the inclination. If you got dreams or your spirit man has been disturbed because it's, 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 it's warnings, it's, it's time. Like, it's time to it's time to get up out of here. When I say that, to let the things of this world go. Let go, be ready to go, like be ready to go. Whatever needs to go can go. I ain't take, I'm not losing Jesus. I'm not giving up on Jesus. I got to be on mindset. Like we, I'm going, he, he's first. You can take whatever, lose the house, lose the car, lose this, lose that family. Whatever the case is, I'm sticking for Jesus because he's the savior of my soul. He's the absolute truth. He's the son of God. I put my soul and my life on that. I get no money. I don't care, but I don't want no money for it. I don't sell no CDs for money. I'm doing it for the truth. He saved me. He saved me by his grace and mercy. I didn't deserve it. I did not deserve it. The last time he woke me up just recently, I did not deserve to be waking up. I backslid into disbelief. I backslid into drunkenness. God in heaven knows. I'm so tired of, 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 of living like a dead man, playing possum, playing dead when I'm not dead. When God, is, I'm still alive. I have grace and mercy. I'm going to walk in that. So I'm going to do everything I can to fight and speak the truth of Jesus Christ, even if it costs me my life. It costs me whatever. And that's why I don't care because I, I know who he is. Even without seeing him, he was there for me. I testify in my songs. He stepped in. He literally stepped in. I pray it don't fall upon deaf ears, but at the same time, the warning's been given, and I'm not the only watchman. Maybe you're a watchman, and maybe you should be warning. Maybe you should be warning yourself, speaking, you know what I'm saying, eating this truth first, first and foremost, like I'm trying to do, and then saying something. Like, we got to say something. I refuse for people's blood to be on my hands anymore. I lost friends to different people I could have said something to, but I, I refuse to let this or that get in the way, and I truly regret that. I should have said something, at least tried. So I'm going to try whatever platform, wherever I go, wherever I can go to, to speak. I'm like, the, the judgment is here, and judgment starts at the house of God, and this is hard. For, he said, if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, how much more for the ungodly and sinner? It's time to not, not waver, saints. So I'm not going to keep badgering, but just understand the portals are being opened up and they're coming through. You know what I'm saying? The dark forces are coming through. Revelation is no joke. It's not a figuratively, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he didn't mean it literally. Nah, I believe it literal. I believe it literal. We, we're, we're, we're the generation. We're the ones that's going to face the worst it's ever been. So it's not time to be weak. It's the time to be the strongest. It's the time to get from God. Whatever we need to put on that arm in Ephesians. Put on that armor and keep that armor on, that spiritual armor. Not the burden of men, the teachings of men that weigh you down like Saul did to David and put all these burdens and unnecessarily this prosperity and all these things that are distracting us from the truth of Jesus Christ and the coming of Jesus Christ. Or everything that distracts you, that makes you think, oh, it's, it's all here. Like, nah, Jesus is bringing his reward with him. We're, we're to focus on him. 
If you have whatever you have, then hey, use it for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Storing up riches for ourselves on this earth would do you no good. You would you 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 you, you could die a fool and have a whole bunch stored up for what? It's about storing riches up in the in in, the, in our spiritual house in the spiritual realm that robbers can't break in and moths don't eat the clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel grieved in my spirit. I gotta say this, and, I, and this is what I'm trying to do: get myself ready, fast and praying, whatever is needed to get closer, draw closer to God. Trusting in him, knowing that you gonna, you're going to protect me. Even if I die, I know my soul is safe. Even if I die, where's the sting of death at? And Jesus, we will not be held by the grave. I got to speak the truth. There's no reincarnation. The only way is a resurrection. The Bible tells us that it's appointed once that a man dies and then judgment. We will be resurrected to either life. And Jesus Christ will resurrect it to death. That is the word of God. That's the truth. And I stand by it. I put my life on it. I put my soul on it. And if I'm wrong, then let me be wrong. And I'll lose my soul, whatever the case is. But I believe I'm convinced so much so. And God has done so much for me and shown me so much that I'm convinced. And I'm ready to lay my life down. And so may I get the chance in the name of Jesus to give God my life. I want to be a martyr, not a casualty. Jesus did so much for me. So much grace and mercy upon my life. <sighs> I got to give it up. It's the least, the least, the least I can do for Jesus. The least I can do. So I'm going to go hard till I'm out of here, till I can't. I pray the same for you. I pray that the Holy Spirit rises up in, 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 in you, that you ignite and you don't never get doubts. You don't quench the spirit. You keep fighting to the end. It's time to fight, saints. Fight with everything we got. Just trust in God. That's, that's, that's the beautiful thing. If we just trust in him, it's not about grabbing swords and physically grabbing guns. The devil will have me tweaking, thinking I'm about to go cut heads off. No, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus. It's just trusting in him, showing up for that battle, ready, fortified by his truth, his, his grace and mercy, by the Holy Spirit, showing up for the battle and let God, let God go to battle. The one who's mighty in battle. The one who has no losses, no losses in battle. How he did for our ancestors. When they just showed up to the battle and he go before them. Praise and worship. Sing praise and worship. And let, let the most high go through. Just get ready, saints. All the signs are there. A wicked generation seeks signs. So I'm not just looking for signs. We should know by his truth in the written word what he wants us to know and, and what he's guiding us into. But nonetheless, the signs are saying now just... Looking for signs, basically, just just signs, not his word and just signs. You could be deceived because it's lying signs and wonders coming as well. Don't get it twisted. It's lying signs and wonders. Antichrist is even one of the beasts going to make fire come from the sky in the sight of men. So there's a lot of lying signs and wonders. But I'm not going to keep being redundant. I'm just giving the warning that the sword is coming. It's time to get ourselves together, prepare ourselves, turn from whatever we need to turn from. Repent for whatever we need to repent for and align ourselves with God and fall upon and go to the grace of mercy and ask him for his mercy. Ask him for his grace. God is merciful. He is so gracious. I have testified to that. I don't deserve it. But I went to the throne of grace. Even with sometimes the weakest of prayers, I must have seen faith and he answered me. He redeemed and restored me even when I didn't deserve to be. So I'm going to speak. I'm not going back to sleep by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree I am not going to sleep. I am going to speak. I don't care. Like I said, if nobody's listening, I'm going to know it. I'm going to build this spiritual boat, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't have to really build it. I just have to receive it. That's how marvelous and awesome God is. All I got to do is believe. He's already doing all the work. All I got to do is just simply believe he's done it. That's it, Lord. All this time I'm going crazy out of my mind. All I got to do is just simply trust and believe in you like you told me to do the whole time. Foolish, man. Carnal mind is truly deaf. <sighs> Lord be to God. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you receive this, that you be blessed. I'm at the Lord may so confirm. His truth. Not that you got to believe me or follow me. No, not at all. Follow Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Don't follow no man. You can eat, learn, but trust and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He is our King. He is our God. He is our provider. Glory, hallelujah. Shalom. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you now forever. Amen.